Go on and worship him. Go on and praise him for being so wonderful in your life. Go on and take a moment and give him thanks. hands together give God glory that he is so wonderful how many know he's wonderful he's wonderful hallelujah father we thank you that you are so wonderful you're so marvelous God we just thank you and we give you glory because that's who you are. Wonderful. And Father, we just pray now that you speak to our hearts. We thank you, God, for this worship experience thus far. We thank you, God, for ministering to us through song, ministering to us through the prayer, ministering to us through all that has taken place thus far. We pray now, God, that you take the water of your word and minister to our hearts now. Make deposit in our spirits, God, that your word will not come back void, that it will take hold and take root in our lives. That we might be that much stronger today. That we might be that much stronger leaving here than when we were when we came. Bless the word now as it goes forth. Bless the word as we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. God, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank fully committed. Amen. For leading us in worship through the music. Amen. Praise the Lord. On last Sunday, I would encourage you, if you were not here, to get the DVD or CD of last week that you might hear the first part of this message amen entitled let Lazarus die amen take it from the 11th chapter of the gospel according to St. John it was a story about Lazarus uh, who had died and Jesus was in the town and it was not that far only an eighth of a mile from the place where Lazarus lived and was told that Lazarus was sick and then he said these words Lazarus is dead and we entitled the message let Lazarus die not speaking about the person but speaking about situations in our life speaking about circumstances speaking about issues in our life there are some of us that need to let Lazarus die there are some of us that need to let past issues die. There are some of us that need to let, let past circumstances die. There are some of us that need to let hurts die. There are some of us that need to let past pains die. There are some things in our lives that we need to let die. Amen. Amen. It, it took the death of Lazarus in order for the people to see the glory of God. In other words, then the message in its, in, in its totality on, on last week was there are some issues in our lives that we need to let die in order that people might see the glory of God in our lives. Are you with me so far? 
Amen. I don't want to go back through the whole message of last week. You need to get the DVD or get the tape. Amen. That way you hear that message in its entirety. But I want to move a little further because we never did get to the end. Amen. Because I want to talk a little bit more about what happened after Lazarus died. Amen. I want to talk about what takes place now after we let some issues die. Some of us need to let some issues die. Amen. Some of us are still dealing with some things. Some of us are still dealing with some people. Some of us are still dealing with some old hurts and pains and stuff that we need to let die that God might birth in us what he needs to do in us. Are you with me? And some things that God has placed in you will stay as a seed and never come forth out of you if you don't let some other things die. And, 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 and Am I right about it? There, there are some things. Just, just that. There are some things that you, you just can't go any further because you allow things in your past to keep you where you are. Have I got a witness in here? Sometimes we just can't go no further. We can't move no. We can't move more because we allow things in our past. We allow issues, or we allow even people to stop us from getting to where we want to go and where God wants you to be. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes, yes. We allow issues and circumstances to keep us back from getting to that place that God wants us to get. That's why we need to let Lazarus die. Jesus told him, he said, Lazarus is dead. And he spoke to them. He said that, that this sickness is not unto death, but it's for, the, to, for people to see the glory of God. And that's why Jesus uh, delayed himself and, 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 and told them that, 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 that he would be there. But yet, when he got there, Lazarus was dead. And they had already buried him and put him in the tomb. I, I want to pick up from that part there. I want to pick up from the scripture that was read to our hearing today. Uh, uh, John chapter number 11. John chapter number 11. Uh, where did we start? Verse 30. What? 32. Look at this. It says, then when Mary was come when Jesus, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. And we dealt with that last week. Get the tape. He said, and when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and, and said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Amen. Skip down to verse number 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, can't cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone. Say a stone. And a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha and the sisters, uh, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he is stinking, for he's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Saith, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Say the dead was laid. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heareth me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it they, that they may believe that thou hast sent that thou hast sent me and when he thus has spoken he cried with a loud voice Lazarus come forth and and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin Jesus said unto them loose him and let him go amen we talked about last week, let, let Lazarus die. Things you need to let die. This week, I want to talk about move the stone and let me out. Look at your neighbor and say, move the stone and let me out. Move the stone and let me out. You see, 
There are some issues in our lives that we need to let die. Am I right about it? I'm sure some of us, all of us, just about all of us got some things we need to let die. Amen. And the, the purpose of this story was for the people to see the glory of God. Am I right about it? Jesus stated it twice in the scripture. He, he, he told them that, 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 that Lazarus almost needed to die, that you might know that God sent me, that you might see the glory of God. There are some things in your life you got to let die so people will see the glory of God in your life. There is a glory about every one of you. Have I got a witness? But that glory cannot come forth unless you let some things go. Are you with me, somebody? But I find that even when we let some things die, things that are dead causes a stink. Are you with me? Things that are dead causes a stink. Because there are some things that though you let die, other people won't let. Uh, are you with me? So, have, have you ever just come out of something? Have you ever just come through something? But then there are others around you who still want to bring it up, who still want to uh, instigate, who still want to talk about it, who still want to act like you still in that place that God delivered you from. It, they, they causes a stink. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it causes uh, a stink. And, and so, 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 therefore, there are some stones in our lives that even though some things are dead, there have been some stones that keep us from breaking out. There are some stones. Now, I need you to look at your scripture. Because Jesus said to them, take away the stone. Now, now I find it peculiar that Jesus did not just move the stone. I find it peculiar that Jesus did not just say, stone, be thou removed. But no, Jesus spoke to the same ones that put the stone in the way. I think you just missed that. <laughs> Jesus spoke to the same people that put the stone in the way. See, there are some people that though you have let some things die, who keep, keep things going in your life, keep instigating situations, who have put a stone in your way, God will speak to them and say, get out their way. God will speak to those same people that try to keep you down. God will speak to those same people that don't want to see you get anywhere. God will speak to those same people and make them get out your way. How many of us got people that standing in our way? How many of us got situations standing in our way? How many people got things standing in our way? But let me tell you something. You need to speak to those things. Now, now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Now, Jesus said... Move the stone. Take, take away the stone. Take, take away the stone. And Mary, Martha, the sister of him said, but, but he stinks. Because he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said unto her, saith not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. God, Jesus now states again that you have to continue that even though you let things die, you can't let people stop you from coming out. You can't let your situations that already die resurrect itself that won't that will hinder you from coming out. Some of us, we got to let things die. We got to bury them and we got to leave them there that God might, his glory might be seen in our lives. Are you with me, somebody? But look at this, 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 look at this. Then they, say they. No, it says then Jesus. No, it says then they took away the stone. 
So Jesus commanded the same ones that put the stone there that now take it away. Say, move the stone. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. He says, I thank you, God, my father, that you had heard me. Let me tell you something. There are some things that some people can't pray you out or some people can't pray you through there are some things that you only can pray yourself through uh, are you with me there are some times that you have to make connection with God and so often times we come running to somebody else and say pray for me I need you to pray for me but let me tell you there's some time you got to let some things die in your life there are some times you got to rise up you got to say move that stone out of my way and you're sometimes you got to look to God yourself and say I look to the hills from which cometh my help I know my help cometh from the Lord there's some time you got to reach up to heaven there's some times you got to lift your voice up to God and cry unto him I'm a father are you with me somebody but look at this look at this I'm almost done I got to get out of here I got to get out of here I want to have you out here by a decent time look look at this Jesus continued to say and I knew that thou heareth me always but because of the people which stand by I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he had thus when he had spoken he cried with a loud voice there's sometimes you got to cry out with a loud voice he said Lazarus come forth ah ha, ha, ha. Hey, let me tell you something let me tell you something there, 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 there's something we need to realize here there's something we need to realize here when Jesus said Lazarus come forth I would suppose that everybody or every person by the name of Lazarus heard the call. I, I think that, that, that when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, that everybody whose name was Lazarus, ears perked up. I think that when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, that all the precincts of heaven and all the precincts of hell heard the voice of Jesus. But, but I come to tell you that Jesus knows who you are. And he knows about your situation. And he knows about your problem. In other words, I don't care of how many other people they are. That's why the songwriter said, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. There might be a whole lot of people with problems just like you. There might be a whole lot of people with issues just like you. But when Jesus calls your name, he knows who you are. He knows what your situation is. He knows what your circumstances is. And he knows all about it. Yeah. Uh, Look at your neighbor and say, move the stone. Because I'm coming out. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand in foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Isn't it funny how some of the same people that try to stop you will be some of the same people that Jesus will lay down before you? It, it, it was the same people that put the stone in the way. That Jesus told him to move the stone. It was the same people that even as Lazarus 
came forth. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Oh, aren't you glad to know that Jesus will take care of your problems? Isn't it glad to know that Jesus will take care of those folk that are messing with you? Aren't you glad to know that Jesus will take care of those folk that are standing in your way? Let me tell you, he'll use those same folk to loose you and set you free. Look at your neighbor and say, move the stone. I'm coming out. How many of you have been bound too long? How many of you have been trapped too long? How many of you have been disappointed too long? Have you been down in the shackles too long? It's time for you to get up out of your grave. It's time for you to come out from beyond that stone. It's time for you to come out. Jesus said, loose them and let them go. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that he not only picked me up, he not only turned me around, he not only set my feet on a solid ground, but when he opened up the doors and opened up the windows of heaven, those people that stood in my way, those people that talked about me, those people that said I wouldn't be nothing, those people that tried to keep me down, those same people, those same situations, God made a way out of no way, just like those people that stood in front of Jesus when he was at the cliff of the rock, about to push him over. God said, nobody shall stand in your way because if God be for you, he's more than a whole world against you. If God be for you, can't nobody stop you. If God be for you, I don't care who's against you. If God be for you, can't nobody step in your way. They were in front of Jesus. Jesus looked back, saw the cliff. Jesus looked at the people that was in his way. But he looked up to heaven, looked to the hills to which coming his help. And though they stood in his way, the Bible says Jesus just walked right on through them. He walked right on past them. Well, I come to let you know, those folk that are standing in front of you, those folk that won't let you get nowhere, just look to the hills for where coming your help. Call on the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, my rock in a weary land. Jesus, Mary's little baby. Jesus, my bride and mortar star. Jesus, my bridge over troubled waters. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just call his name. And when you call his name, he'll make you walk where you never walked before. He'll make you run like you never ran before. He'll make you pass through those people that try to keep you down. Move the stone. Get out of my way. Because I'm coming to let you know you're not going to stop me. You're not going to push me back. But I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to see the king. I don't know about you. But I'm not going to let folk stop me from getting to where I need to go. I'm gonna, not going to let people stop me from where I need to be. I'm not going to let people tell me I ain't nobody. You ain't nothing. You ain't going nowhere. But I know that I know that I know that I know I am somebody in the name of Jesus. Get out of my way. Move that old stone. I'm coming to let you know. I'm coming out. 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 Look at your neighbor. Say, I may be bound, but I want to let you know. I'm coming out. I may be hurting, but I'm coming out. I may be sick, but I'm coming out. I may be down, but I'm coming out. Folk may talk about me, but I'm coming out. Folk may try to push me down, but I'm coming out. 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 I'm coming out.
too long. Oh, I've been down too long. Been down too long. It's starting to stink. Been down too long. It's starting to smell. But when Jesus calls my name, he said, lose them and let them go. Lose them. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. So I can walk right. So I can talk right. So I can run on. Your neighbors and move the stone. I'm coming out. My deliverance is here right now. Move your pocketbook. You better move your feet. Because I'm about to come out. I'm about to do a dance. And I might dance all over your feet. You would just have to excuse me. Because you don't know. Like I know what the Lord has done for me and I just gotta shout I just gotta dance I just gotta praise him Your neighbor might be looking at you like you're crazy. But let me tell you something. It's about time that you tell him, move that stone. Because I'm coming out. Move that stone. It's been keeping me back too long. Move that stone. It's been keeping me down too long. I need a breakthrough. I need my deliverance. I need some joy I need some peace I need some happiness get out my way stone I'm coming out ah yes somebody's about to get a breakthrough right now your deliverance is here right now you've been fighting all by yourself but let me tell you something Jesus just said, loose them and let them go. The Spirit of God is loosing you right now. He's setting you free right now. Glory. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be free? There are some things in your life that you need to let die right now. You need to let them die right now that Jesus might birth forth that seed that is in you that new that new seed that new seed that is coming out that new seed that is moving away those stones in your life that, that new seed that is going to loose you and set you free let some things die and then tell those folk get out my way move your old stones because I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Every head bowed, every eye closed. With uplifted hands. Lord, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of my depression. I'm coming out of my sickness. I'm coming out of my disease. I'm coming out of my attitude are coming out of my disposition i'm coming out of those things that try to keep me down and keep me back i'm coming out i'm coming out i'm coming out of my sorrow i'm coming out of my problems i'm coming out because you have made me the righteousness of christ and so i'm coming out 
I'm coming out. No longer will I allow Satan and his enemy and his devices to keep me where I am. But I'm coming out. No longer will I listen to people define who I am. No longer will I let my situations and circumstances define who I am. Because I am defined by the word of God. And I am who God says I am. Not who man says I am. Not who circumstances says I am. Not who my past says I am. I am who God says I am. And God says I'm victorious. His word says I'm more than a conqueror. His word says I'm, in, I'm his righteousness. I'm wonderfully and marvelously made. I am who God says I am. And so this is my day of deliverance. This is my day that the seed that is on the inside of me is breaking through its shell. That, that which is on the inside might come forth. That people might see the glory of God in my life. The same people who seen what I've been through. The same people who was there when I was going through it. The same people who even was, had something to do with me going through it. Those same people will see the glory of God in my life. Those same people that talked about me. They will see the glory of God in my life. Doctors who diagnosed me will see the glory of God in my life. People who said I would never get anywhere, be nobody, they will see the glory of God in my life. Let Lazarus die and move the stones and let me out. For behold, I'm a new man. I'm a new woman in Christ Jesus. And his word says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, you never accepted Jesus Christ for yourself. You need to come out. For the Bible says, for come out from among them. And be ye separated and touch not the unclean things of the world. He needs you to come out right now. And as everyone stand to their feet. We need you to come out right now. Come out. If you're not saved, if you never gave your life to the Lord. I need you to step out of your seat right now and come. And give your life to him. Come out. Come out. Don't let those stones keep you where you are before we leave when we had all the announcements of all the graduations all of the ones came up front there's one that we didn't do this one is for our pastor Reverend Hutton has made phenomenal strides in areas of divinity. His early entry into ministry and sustaining presence as a churchman, perpetual academic work in the area of theology, success and recognition in the area of chaplaincy, and his current work in the vineyard of the historic Second Baptist Church of Mount Holly, New Jersey is all laudable and the impotence which propels him into the covenant and distinguished candidacy of being a doctor of divinity. A 
Doctor of Divinity recipient of Apex School of Theology in North Carolina. Pass if you would, come forward. <laughs> resolution that I'm going to read in this entirety and this is from the I think this is from the clergy of Mount Holly Reverend Ken Pipes is the uh, president and it reads whereas the Reverend Timothy L. Hutton has served the Lord as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ since his license to preach at the age of 10 and his ordination to the ministry in 1987 Whereas Reverend Hutton has served as pastor of Second Baptist Church in Mount Holly, New Jersey, faithfully for the past six years, and whereas his wisdom, intelligence, spiritual discernment, and charisma have been a witness to the love and grace of his Lord Jesus Christ, and whereas being a pastor in a spiritual gift and a high calling of the Lord demanding discipline, prayer, and dedication, to both the Lord and those whom Christ has called to be his church. And whereas the wise counsel, powerful preaching, and the gentle demeanor give evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. And whereas Reverend Hutton has not just served his own congregation, but been a true partner with other people of faith, giving witness to the love of Jesus Christ in the Rancocas Valley region of Burlington County, Southern New Jersey, and the whole Delaware Valley, as he participated in interfaith and multi-denominational worship, education, and service events. And whereas those who know him, love him, respect him, and value his work as a spiritual brother in the Rancocas Valley Clergy Association, desire to show him our respect and give him honor for his selection to receive the title of Doctor of Divinity by Apex School of Ministry on May the 18th, 2013. Therefore, let it be known by all who read or hear this resolution that we, the undersigned, hold Reverend Timothy L. Hutton in the highest esteem and give thanks to God for his witness and service in our community and further that we pray to God that Reverend Hutton will continue to enjoy many, many years of rewarding ministry at Second Baptist Church, shared with his wife Dawn and family, and that good health and happiness shall be his in all the days of his life. And this is memorialized the day, of course, is not the 18th day of May, but this is when this was written by his brothers and sisters in the Rancocas Valley Clergy Association, Reverend Kent R. Pipes, President. This is from the Apex School of Theology in Durham, North Carolina, which I'm familiar, familiar with. Apex School Theology thereby confers upon Timothy Lawrence Hutton Sr. the degree of Doctor of Divinity. Together with all the rights, privileges, and honor appertaining thereunto in consideration of the satisfactory and completion of the courses prescribed by the facility and the board of directors, in testimony whereof the undersigned by authority obsessed in them have hereunto affixed their signatures given at Durham, North Carolina on this 18th Lord's Day of May 2013. This is by the chairman of the board, W.E. Day, and also signed by the president of the School of Theology, Dr. J. E. Parker. Perkins. This is his diploma of graduation from the Apex School of Theology. And now for
from the Second Baptist Church family. This is from all of us. Timothy L. Hutner, Second Baptist Church, Mount Holly. And we indeed have another privilege. There's also another person in the church, his father. And I'm going to ask him to come now and pray over this marvelous transition from Reverend Hutton. I know he's enjoyed all of it. I want you to continue to give God the glory because we know that's where it came from. Let us pray. Gracious Father, as you dawn this road, Lord, may the glory of heaven shine upon you. May he continue in your faith. And with this robe, Lord, signifies his accomplishments. Lord, we just praise you and glorify you for him. In Jesus' name we pray. So now when you see him running up and down the aisles, flying off the pulpit, standing on the pews, say hi doc. <laughs> 